Arsenic is a lot more common than most people think. It's found in groundwater, rice, some seafood, pressure treated wood, and even certain pesticides. That means low level exposure is a real issue for many people. And even though your body can handle trace amounts of it, arsenic definitely has the potential to accumulate in those with sluggish elimination pathways. This buildup then happens especially in your skin, lungs, liver, and nervous system. So in this video, I will walk you through a natural protocol to help your body get rid of arsenic in a gentle and effective way. Nothing extreme, no crash detoxes, and definitely no forcing your body to do something that it's not ready for. Okay, so the reason arsenic is so dangerous is twofold. First, it disrupts your cellular energy production, specifically your mitochondria. Arsenic interferes with ATP generation, which is your body's main energy currency. That's why fatigue is one of the most common symptoms of arsenic buildup. Second, arsenic also creates oxidative stress and inflammation. It depletes glutathione and causes damage to DNA, proteins, and lipids. And like other metals, it also interferes with nutrient absorption, enzyme function. Arsenic competes with phosphorus, and it can also mess with pathways that involve selenium and sulfur, which are key players in your detox and antioxidant defense. So it doesn't just harm directly, it also blocks your body ability to heal and protect itself. Now, arsenic poisoning can look different depending on the type of exposure, so if it's acute or chronic. But for low-level, long-term exposure, which is what we're talking about in this video, the symptoms can be vague and easy to overlook. You have things like fatigue or general weakness, brain fog or memory problems, tingling in hands and feet, skin changes like dark spots or thickening, digestive issues, and anxiety or mood swings. A lot of these symptoms are nonspecific, and that's part of the problem. You might just chalk them up to stress, aging, or burnout. But if you've had long-term exposure through water, rice, or environmental sources, then arsenic could definitely be the hidden driver. And again, this isn't about acute arsenic poisoning, which needs medical care right away. This video is about how to support your body in clearing out the kind of long-term arsenic buildup that creeps in over time. Now, the arsenic detox protocol that I will give you is very similar to the detox protocols I have on my channel for other heavy metals, but there are a few small things that need to be adjusted. Before we get into it, let me first start with what I don't recommend, which is chelation therapy. Chelation therapy is where you use a substance that binds to metals and pulls them out. This might be things like EDTA or DMSA. These can be life-saving in cases of acute poisoning, but they're not something that I would recommend for long-term low-level arsenic issues. That's because chelators also pull out essential minerals like magnesium, zinc, and calcium, which most people are already low in, and that can leave you feeling worse than before. Plus, when you suddenly yank out metals like arsenic out of your tissues, your liver and kidneys have to scramble to eliminate them. If your detox organs aren't ready, then that arsenic can just get redistributed to more sensitive places like your brain, which also makes the problems worse. So instead, you need to support your body's natural elimination pathways first. That way, your body can start gently pushing arsenic out of its own and at the pace that it can handle. That means the first step is always to work on liver, kidney, and gut function. These are your main exit routes. If they're sluggish, then metals like arsenic can't get out efficiently and they will just keep recirculating. So you want to do things like support your liver and increase bile flow. This is explained in way more detail in other videos, and it's very important for toxin elimination of all kinds. You want to stay hydrated to support kidney filtration, and you want to make sure that you're having regular bowel movements. That's also non-negotiable because constipation means that toxins sit around longer and can get reabsorbed. These things alone can already start lowering your arsenic burden without anything drastic. The next step is to replace arsenic with its mineral counterparts. This is based on something called ionic mimicry. Arsenic competes with phosphorus, selenium, and sulfur compounds in your body. If you're deficient in these, then your body will actually use arsenic as a poor substitute, which is exactly what we don't want. So by replenishing these nutrients, you're telling your body that it's safe to let go of all the arsenic. Selenium helps neutralize arsenic by forming less toxic complexes and 100 to 200 micrograms per day of selenomethionine or selenium yeast is a solid dose. You can also get it from Brazil nuts, but other food sources are usually not good enough. Sulfur is crucial for detox enzymes. You want to get it from things like garlic, onions, eggs, cruciferous vegetables, 
or supplements like N-acetylcysteine. And for phosphorus, you usually get enough from food if you eat enough protein. But if your diet is low in protein, you might need to pay close attention since protein is the main phosphorus source for most of us. And lastly, magnesium, which is always used up when toxic metals are present. And here, a dose of around 300 to 400 milligrams would be a good starting point. You might need more if you tolerate it well. Again, the idea here is to replace what arsenic mimics or blocks. That way, your enzymes and antioxidant systems can start working again and push that arsenic out naturally. The third step is to boost antioxidants and handle arsenic's damage. When it starts coming out of storage, it can create a lot of oxidative stress, which is why antioxidants are so important. They help neutralize these free radicals so your cells stay protected during the detox. The most important ones here would be vitamin C, which also helps mobilize arsenic and supports collagen to protect blood vessels from damage. And a good range would be 200 to 1000 milligrams per day. You probably want to start on the lower end of that range and then work your way up slowly. Vitamin E is also important and here around 100 to 400 IU per day can help protect fats in your brain and nerves from oxidative stress. Then we have glutathione, which is one of the most important antioxidants in your body. You can support it with precursors like N-acetylcysteine, usually in a dose from 600 to 2200 milligrams per day. Or you can also just eat sulfur rich foods like garlic, onions, eggs and cruciferous vegetables. Generally with antioxidants, you want to find a good balance and not go crazy overboard because too much and they will become a chelator themselves and will start pushing out arsenic. Also keep in mind that there is something called mitohormesis and that's the idea that small amounts of stress on your cells actually make them stronger over time. These mild stressors trigger your body's natural defense systems, your detox pathways and your mitochondrial repair. But if you take too many antioxidants, especially in very high doses from supplements, you can block this process. That's because your body needs a bit of oxidative stress to activate these protective systems. So you definitely need more antioxidants during active detox and when the toxic metals are coming out, you want to be careful with very high doses long term, since they can blunt the signal to improve your cellular resistance. That's just a side note that I wanted to include. Step four is then to support metallothionine and other detox proteins. Metallothionine is one of your body's best natural tools for dealing with toxic metals, including arsenic. It binds to them and helps move them out of your body safely. To make metallothionine, you need zinc and cysteine. Zinc should be taken in a dose from around 15 to 30 milligrams per day, sometimes more, but some people get side effects from it. So again, start low and then see how your body reacts. And cysteine is an amino acid that you will find in things like dairy, for example. It's also a very important building block for glutathione. If you don't tolerate dairy, the best supplemental dose would again be an acetylcysteine, so NAC. These together, so zinc and cysteine, will then give your body the raw materials it needs to create metallothionine so it can be safely moved through your body and then hopefully land in your bile or urine and then you pee or poop it out. Great. Step five would be to use a gentle binder that can catch arsenic in the gut. Because once you start mobilizing it, you want something in your intestines to trap it and carry it out so it doesn't get reabsorbed. This is where binders come in. This can be things like zeolite, chlorella, modified citrus pectin, or just plenty of fiber from all the vegetables that you should be eating anyways. If you're using supplemental binders, you usually want to take them apart from your meals and supplements just to avoid interfering with their absorption. You don't need to go crazy with them and besides the fiber that should already be in your diet, they're optional, but some people definitely benefit from them, so I also wanted to mention them. And then the last step is also optional, and it will be to use low-dose chelators, but only when you're ready. So if you've already supported your elimination organs, replaced the arsenic counterparts, boosted antioxidants, and increased your metallothionine function, then you can consider introducing gentle chelators like alpha lipoic acid. This is a natural chelator and not the same as a synthetic chelator that I talked about before. Alpha lipoic acid helps bind to metals and pull them out of cells. And most people use it for mercury, but it can also assist with arsenic detox. A typical low dose would be something like 50 to 100 milligrams per day, but many supplements include way more. So you kind of have to be careful, especially in the beginning. 
You want to take it on an empty stomach and again, only try this after building your foundation. If you feel worse, then pull back and focus on liver support and antioxidants again. Detox should never feel like a punishment and even natural chelators like alpha lipoic acid can definitely be overdosed. Before I wrap this video up, let's also talk about avoiding arsenic exposure and reaccumulation. One of the biggest dietary sources for it is rice, especially brown rice, which tends to absorb more arsenic from the soil. To reduce this risk, rinse your rice and cook it in a lot of excess water to flush out some of that arsenic. Six to one is a good water to rice ratio, so six cups of water per one cup of rice. This is the most commonly recommended ratio that you will find out there, and studies show that it can remove up to 40 to 60% of arsenic in the rice. A 10 to one ratio seems to be even more effective though, with some studies showing up to 80% reduction of arsenic content. Theoretically, this can also reduce certain nutrients like B vitamins and iron in the rice, so it might be a trade-off. But if you eat a lot of rice, definitely make sure to keep this in mind. Seafood can also contain organic acid, especially shellfish, but it's generally considered less toxic than the inorganic form that is found in water and grains. But you should be careful with seafood anyway because of the potential mercury, so don't over rely on it in your diet. When it comes to environmental exposure, your drinking water will be the biggest factor here, especially if you use well water or live in areas where groundwater is known to be contaminated. So always use a good water filter here, and if you live near industrial sites or agricultural areas, also be cautious about possible soil exposure especially with kids that might be playing there. So make sure they wash their hands before eating. Great, to wrap this up, arsenic is a lot more common than many of us realize and long-term exposure can mess with all kinds of systems in your body. But the good news is that our body has a natural detoxification pathway for arsenic and you can definitely optimize it. If you do this slowly, then the detox will be very safe and it will actually improve how you feel day to day without crazy side effects. And if you need more detailed help with proper toxin elimination, check out my detox masterclass in the description. It includes protocols on all kinds of toxins, not just heavy metals, but also microplastics, excess estrogen, or forever chemicals. It shows you how to get rid of them step by step and talks about the most common beginner mistakes that can set people back a lot. It covers diet supplements, elimination pathway support, and much more. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.